Olá pessoal, tudo bem? And welcome to the Brazil Crypto Report podcast, where we talk to the builders, entrepreneurs, and influencers from across the Brazil crypto ecosystem. Today I'm joined by Jorge Soto and Paulo Bocosian of Traders Club, where they co-lead the TC Crypto division. And we're going to learn more about what that is today. Uh, so Jorge and Paulo, thanks so much for joining us today on the show. Thank you, Aaron. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Aaron. Awesome. Uh, pleasure to be here. Um, let's, you know, rock and roll. Let's do it. Absolutely. So, Georgie, why don't we start with you? Why don't you tell us a bit more about yourself and uh, let's let's and what is what is TC Crypto? Um, um, basically, I'm, I'm I come from from TradFi. I discovered Bitcoin in 2013, but you know, uh, I didn't buy any. Uh, but I was I kept monitoring the the asset for a long time, and the end of 2016, beginning of 2017, I started you know to to uh, allocate some of my uh, my wealth on it. And since then, uh, I I was doing you know I was trading the markets and, and trying to understand the markets crypto markets uh, as a side job. I had I worked for banks for 10 years almost, uh, more than 10 years actually, and. Then uh, at the beginning of 2021, I was a, a subscriber of uh, uh, Traders Club. I'm a friend of the CEO, and he basically uh, introduced me to Paulo and said, "Oh, you guys, you're, you're going to be uh, partners on this uh, new, new uh, division that we're creating. We need to have uh, a crypto division here at TC. TC, it, uh, TC basically is uh, is a platform." for initially for retail investors uh, to you know uh, decrease the gap between the retail and the institutional level of information. Uh, it's very a very young company started in 2016, if I recall, and in 2021 uh, it IPO'd here in Brazil, so it's a public company. Um, it's still a lot, is currently still, uh, the focus, main focus is still is in trade markets, but you know, crypto became a relevant division. Um, uh, we were acquired, uh, our company, my, my name was on bike TC, and then we became like a full uh, uh, partners of the company. And since then, we, we launched a lot of stuff. Um, we have um, we have one of the, the largest uh, channels within TC. Um, we had we have a, a managed wallet uh, service which is uh, is um, doing in conjunction with uh, Mercado Bitcoin, which is our partner also. And recently, last month, uh, we, uh, yeah, last month, we uh, launched a, a CVM regulated fund, a crypto fund, uh, focusing in, in liquid assets. So uh, basically, uh, TC expanded a lot. Today's business is not only focusing in retail, you can think of it like a uh, like a sort of a Bloomberg uh, for Brazil. So uh, they have a, a, a terminal with Economatica. We have uh, new services. We have data services, research for several kinds of, of assets. So now it's becoming. Uh, uh, we just we have the we acquired TC Pandora, which is an asset management where the fund is uh, was created. Our fund and other funds from from TC. And we are uh, in the final stages to launch a brokerage house uh, also in, in Brazil. So a lot of things going on, but uh, the, we are very excited, not only on, on the crypto side, but also on, on TC side as well. Now. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for the explanation. Um, so, Paulo, why don't you, let's hear from you here. How did you kind of get started in crypto? How did you get involved in TC? What's your what's your current role at, uh, at TC Crypto Traders Club? Uh, and tell us about this uh, this sort of arranged marriage between uh, you and Georgie. It sounds like. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, right? I never, I never believed in arranged weddings, and it, it, it worked. <laughs> it worked really well. Um, I come from a completely different background as as Georgie. Um, I I uh, heard about Bitcoin in 2016 uh, by a friend that was starting a mining operation. And I, I always love exotic theories and markets. I think that a good part of the alpha is in uh, uh, the non-mainstream thesis. 
Uh, so I decided to study uh, what it, what was this mining thing about. It's crazy that how can you mine a digital coin and all that, all that uh, first reaction that people have to to Bitcoin mining, and that started my curiosity and and I went on to to study. Uh, I, I I started out with the the MOOC in the University of Nicosia, uh, which is really really good and and also it's free. And, and after the MOOC, I, I really enjoyed it. And I, I got a partial scholarship to the master's degree. So uh, I, I, I took the course. Uh, I graduated in 2019. And, and after that, I started teaching uh, through Blockchain Academy, which is an education-focused company from uh, 2TM, which is uh, the holding that, uh, uh, of Mercado Bitcoin. Uh, but that was just a side job then. And, and when the pandemic came, um, I, I also was a client at, at TC. Uh, I also uh, trade equities and, and I, I also knew the founders. And, and when, one day, I, I used to talk a lot to, to the founders that uh, the TC business model was completely uh, possible to replicate it to crypto. And in Brazil, we have as many as or maybe more individual investors in crypto than in TradFi. So uh, I was telling them we have to open a, a crypto business unit. And, and one day it became true. And, and, and uh, Pedro Buquerque, which is the, the founder, invited me for lunch. And there was Jorge in the lunch. And he's like, this is your partner now. Your guys are going to have a, a channel in TC. <laughs> and and let's see what happens. And, and it was a, a great success. Yeah. It's a great story uh, that, that we have in TC since early 2021. Uh, then, like George just said, our company uh, got acquired, and 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 now we have uh, all sorts of uh, uh, products here involving crypto inside TC. Mm -hmm. And I think um, TC has broken this uh, uh, tradfi uh, crypto uh, wall. You know, like. Uh, mm. Uh, it's, it's not not only a tradfi company now; it's also known as a crypto company in Brazil, and and of course, Mercado Bitcoin helped a lot with that. They are partners at TC, and and they're the uh, probably one of the most relevant players here in Brazil. Great, great. So just to kind of summarize and make sure I'm understanding correctly, uh, so Traders Club is really uh, it's it's a business. It's like kind of an education and almost like a community type of uh, business model where you're, you're bringing in, you know, it's a place for retail investors up to, you know, kind of more professional investors to kind of get educated, um, you know, to, to access kind of exclusive content and, and you know, different types of uh, educational programming or just kind of stay ahead of the latest. And it's also, it's also a, um, you know, just a community as well, where there, there's, there's a bit more of, um, you know, ability to kind of uh, more of an exclusive community of people who have kind of opted in and um, and you've become, you know, sounds like you've become a pretty nice funnel for uh, of capturing both like, you know, investors who are interested in both the crypto and in kind of uh, the traditional side of things. I would love to drill in. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong in any of that, but that's that seems to be am I, no, am I understanding perfect. that correctly? Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, it, it started uh, as a community of traders that, that wanted uh, to trade together. And, and together, it's much better to trade when you have more information, you exchange information, etc. And it started off from that to what we have now, which is a one-stop shop for investors in TradFi and crypto. So Got all it. kinds of tools that an investor would need uh, to, to uh, uh, be in operating markets in different markets, uh, informational tools, educational tools, uh, data and, and, and whatnot. So I'd like to dive into a point you mentioned, uh, Paulu, which was that the, the community of people that are trading crypto or interested in trading crypto is like just as large or even larger than uh, the community of people who are trading more traditional assets. And I, I've seen these types of statistics, you know, floated around where there, you know, there's more people with accounts on Mercado Beach coin than on, you know, the B3 and whatnot, but would love to, I guess I'm always kind of like a little bit suspect of some of these claims just because it's like, how do you actually you know, measure these things fully accurately? But I think the, the premise still stands that the, you know, the, the community of people that are trading crypto is, is, is compared to the, uh, you know, the traditional asset classes, 
is still quite large and, and quite quite balanced, probably much more so than other other uh, markets. So we'd love to get a little bit more color from from what you guys have seen on, you know, how like who are the types of traders that are coming into this that are interested? Are you getting a lot of people who are maybe they were trading, you know, equities or derivatives or whatever commodities, and then their crypto for them is just kind of a new asset class that they can, a new thing they can trade. Uh, or are you getting a lot of just like new people coming in that maybe get excited about crypto and they've never really traded before? Um, and but you know maybe you know trading equities doesn't excite them, but trading crypto does for whatever reason. Uh, maybe talk a bit yeah. about give some color on that. Yeah, great. I think that our public specifically, uh, our core doesn't represent what the whole market is here in Brazil today. Um, our public is intermediary uh, uh, traders that already know markets um, mostly and some of them are come from traditional markets some of them already come from crypto uh, but I think that uh, the, the, the big picture here in Brazil is that um, uh, uh, it, like other developing countries with weak currencies and, and uh, stock markets that underperform uh, uh, other global markets and even the, the fixed income here in Brazil. If you look at the CDI, uh, our, our, our benchmark uh, 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 interest rates, uh, you, you see that a uh, few periods, uh, the stock market overperformed. So uh, crypto gives an opportunity to people to invest in a different market and also gives an opportunity to be exposed to uh, uh, a different kind of asset. And uh, sometimes uh, if you think of Bitcoin as a, a reserve uh, asset, uh, it's, it's a store of value, uh, which is important for a country that has historically had many problems with its currency. So uh, we're living in a period right now where the real is, is uh, really well, but we've had other uh, currencies in the past, Cruzeiro, Cruzado Novo, uh, many episodes of uh, currency depreciation where we, we took off three zeros from, from, from the currency, like many other uh, cases that you see nowadays, uh, especially uh, 90s and, and, and even before that. Um, so I think this, this thing uh, really weighs in on, on how much participation you have from the Brazilian investor in crypto markets. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's my view. If Georgie wants to add, yeah, Georgie would be great. We'd love, we'd love to kind of get your thoughts on like that. We'd love your reaction to that as well as kind of the, the, your thoughts on the balance between uh, you know crypto investors versus you know equity or traditional asset class investors in Brazil. Yeah, my my perception is similar to Paulo's, but one thing that I think stands out to me is uh, the, the crypto market in Brazil is more. Uh, still today a very retail focus so um we don't see a lot of institutional uh guys uh playing this this market uh that's why we don't see uh that much coverage uh, in brazil in the us is a little bit different you know asia is a little bit different but here uh the 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 big investors they they are still on the status quo they are still in trade markets some of them are waking up for crypto but it takes time and uh, so, so uh, I think if you, if you, we can, we can uh, split the, the following. Uh, probably we have a lot of retail participation in crypto, but usually small amounts. You know, you have like a, a very uh, top of the, the pyramid of people that have that have you know real uh, wealth and, and play in these markets, but usually are like really small uh, uh, capital. Put in, in in crypto, while uh, in, in equities and, and you know fixed income and so forth, you have the big guys. So you know, uh, despite having more numbers, we don't have uh, all the other capital you know that runs in, in the country. So uh, I think this this is the, the, the main striking view, and which is also a opportunity because as time goes by, you know, uh, you, you have a saturated market in a market that is very, very uh, lean in terms of uh, capital. And then, you know, you just, th this starts to, to, to change at some point. That's our thesis. Uh, uh, crypto will be one of the largest markets globally. And Brazil, surely, uh, if it becomes a one of the largest markets globally, Brazil will be uh, 
there will be more, more capital in Brazil flowing to the to the sector. Yeah, I, I, I really agree with George's view here. And if I may add, uh, if, you, if you compare, like you look at the hedge funds in the U.S. and and globally, like people like uh, Paul Tudor Jones, Anthony Scaramucci, even Stanley Drucken Miller, investing in in Bitcoin specifically uh, as a small portion of the portfolios and here in Brazil you don't see that movement that often I think we had an episode with Fundo Verde which is a very important uh, multi mercado which is similar to a hedge fund but not so flexible the the multi mercados here in Brazil are not as flexible as the hedge funds in the US uh, but we've had a very small uh, number of anecdotal, anecdotal cases of institutional money coming into uh, to Crypto as an investment, uh, 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 buying the assets, uh, not buying uh, token tokenizadoras or, or tokenization companies or, or things like that, but infrastructure kind of investments. That's a different case. But speaking about like investing in Bitcoin or uh, crypto assets, we've seen uh, the institutional uh, checks come more from uh, family offices or, or, or uh, uh, like, uh, a big family with with a lot of wealth and putting a small portion of their their portfolio in crypto. Not so much of the main funds in the market. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that. That's super helpful context. Um, would love to get your thoughts on just why there's been maybe the institutional adoption or uptake has been uh, a bit slower than perhaps what we've seen in the U.S. and in Asia and Europe. Um, I mean, do you think it's maybe kind of just an education issue? Maybe there's just if there's just not as enough kind of you know Portuguese language resources to be able to get educated on this type of asset class. Um, I think I think another factor, at least from my purview, would be that crypto hasn't really had the greatest reputation in Brazil. I mean, there's just a lot of like kind of scams and pyramids, and a lot of the, the headlines are usually like negative things, not so much like the you know the, the you know the positive things, I guess. Um, but with, or or is it just that there's just you know the you know, if you if you can make you know 14 15 percent just investing in government debt or in fixed income uh, maybe it's 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 you know why, why would I want something so volatile when when the returns I'm making off of uh, these fixed income products are already pretty good um, so is, is it really maybe just a question of it's the alternatives are are, are quite lucrative at the moment um, I, I think it's a mix of several factors. Um, if you see, uh, in, even in traditional markets, we have a very low participation of the population in, you know, uh, all types of securities. Usually, the bulk of the population, what they have, a savings account, you know, which pays much less than uh, any kind of other instruments that we have in the market. Uh, if, you, if you're talking about stocks, you know, it's even more hard get people uh, to 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 trade it uh fixed income basically uh impossible for retail uh only for institutions so this in itself is a barrier um and then we add crypto which you know is very hard to understand is a new paradigm is uh there are new stuff that you need to be aware it's like you know when we the computers uh, uh, uh were invented uh early early days of the tech uh the tech companies you know we don't we didn't have a lot of people using it at some point it became uh, the standard but takes time so we have like financial education in brazil is really bad that's uh for sure a a a uh one of the the factors here um to the 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 market is still the asset class is still not that big so before 2017 uh, and between 2017 and 2020, uh, you couldn't say in a bank, I work at, uh, at banks, I couldn't say that, you know, I had Bitcoin. People would say that I was like, or retarded, or, you know, I was a scammer. Um, then we had in 2020, after the the big macro guys um, came forward and said, okay, we are, we are uh, allocating to, to Bitcoin and, you know, other cryptos uh, came on, on their tail. Uh, uh, Basically, you know, there was a shift. Oh, this asset class is for real. This is not a game. Um, and Brazil is always lagging in terms of uh, everything, basically, because you know, um, not always, but usually is lagging. And 
took more time for the the, the local uh, investment community to start to accept. And until today, uh, when we speak to some people, um, we are labeled as crazy until today. Um, we get that look, right? Yeah. <laughs> you all know that look. <laughs> So basically, it's, it's, it's a combination of factors, in my opinion, but um, I think the, the financial education in Brazil is very, very bad. I think probably is, is the most relevant uh, um, uh, factor here to, you know, we don't have more broad adoption. I, th I yeah. think that also, if I, sorry, Aaron, um, uh, just to add, uh, while the retail investor in Brazil is more risk taker, uh in crypto uh, uh and, and there are a lot of scams and all that i think that uh the institutional investor is a, a has a more uh, conservative bias as well you know especially for new technologies and you see you see very few uh, funds with with tech pieces um, there's a really good venture capital community here in brazil but that's a, a different uh public from the traditional financial markets so yeah and that's, that's a really good point in that the you know the institutionals are going to be they're always going to be a bit more conservative than the retail folks the retail punters if you will um in this case though i mean what is it about at least just looking at kind of your membership and the, the community that you've assembled here what is it what's maybe the how would you how would you kind of define like a profile of these individuals? Like, what are they? What's their interest in crypto? Are they interested in this? As I mean, hey, we want to get some access to like you know USD peg stable coins. We want it. We want you know we want to buy some blue chip Bitcoin ETH as kind of uh, you know uh, just sort of balancing out the portfolio essentially. Or do you have a lot of guys who are kind of you know the the DGEN sort of you know punter types who are uh, you know <laughs> looking for the next you know the next moon coin or whatever. Uh, or, or do you kind of have a mix of, of all of the above? Yeah, sorry. Uh, I think it's more of a mix. Um, there's this thesis that Andreessen Horowitz uh, talks a lot about, uh, about how the, the small bubbles in crypto and the big price appreciations in crypto, they drive ad adoption in crypto markets. They, they create a, a, a cycle of positive feedback. Uh, People coming into the market, people starting building projects, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so inevitably, uh, when there are these big price moves, many people are attracted to them, and and and, and many people come into this market because of the big uh, volatility and, and the symmetry of returns, and that's uh, uh, out of question. It's it's for sure. It's 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 one of the things that drives adoption. But once people are in crypto. Uh, they have different uh, behaviors inside the crypto market. So some of our public uh, likes trading and they're uh, natural traders. Uh, some of our public uh, fall in love with the crypto uh, uh, asset class as a whole and start studying it more. It's a, I, I resonate with that a lot. Um, and, and so we have uh, some people as well that have a small portion of their portfolio in crypto as a diversification. Um, so there are many uh, small cohorts inside our, our community. I think it's a, a mix. Yeah, I agree. Just, just to add, I think there was, since we started the, the, our community, there was a, a very uh, striking um, um, pattern, standard that, that uh, I noticed. The guy, the, he subscribed at first because he saw a number go up and, you know, they trusted TC, they trusted what, what we, we are doing there. And uh, so the, you want a, a, you know, a share of the pie. But as time uh, went on, some of these guys, the tourists, they left. And there, there was like a, a pretty reasonable amount. Uh, our estimates were that in a bear market, the, our subscribers will, will fall, will, would fall uh, much more than, than it did. And so... Uh, they they came for the for the number go up, but they stayed because you know they understood and and you know I think we did a good job uh, trying to communicate this that this is not only a a get rich quick scheme is much more uh, much broader there is an uh, ideology uh, behind it uh, is a new paradigm and you know today uh, my feeling is that we have a lot more people interested in you know going on chain using stuff 
uh, not only you know get login in Binance uh, 100x leverage uh, ten dollars and let's pray you know to 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 hit one million uh, it's a very very different mindset. So, so your retention has been pretty good throughout the bear market. Then, like you've had, you know, a few of the, a few of the folks that were here just for get rich, rich quick uh, opportunities, you know, though they found they moved on to something else. But, but generally speaking, the community that you've assembled has been pretty resilient, and they're, you know, they're they're in it for the tech, so to say, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, even if it's some of these, uh, you know, the, the rough. It's been a pretty rough like last twelve months or so in this market, but. But that's cool to hear that you've had a, a good retention. I think that really shows that you know there's there, there's a, the, the community is solid, right? If 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 people are sticking around, even I mean they see the bear market as an opportunity, right? Like you're getting I mean, you're getting Bitcoin at a you know 50, 60, 70 percent discount, right? So that's uh, that's exactly what we try to 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 show them. Uh, I think that experience in crypto is measured by the amount of cycles that you've lived through. And if you've lived through enough cycles, you know that the opportunities to, to make these kinds of gains, they are in the bear market, not in the bull market. So that's a, a message that we try to, to, to show our, our, our subscribers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and what are your, 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 what's your community, your subscribers, what are they kind of most interested in, in learning about at the moment? Are they, um, you know, we've crypto. There's always some sort of drama going on in crypto. There's always, you know, you know, kind of new technical protocol upgrades, which had this Ethereum Shanghai uh, Chappelle upgrade. Uh, there's always like regulatory sort of landmines you got to be watching out for. You know, um, but what what is your community? Um, you know, what are they most interested in? Kind of learning about, or what's what are they kind of most excited about at this point? Um, one thing that we do a lot, we cover a lot of macro, I think, because we came from TradFi. So uh, we basically educated a lot of them on, on the, the effects that macro have in crypto. So it's something that um, in 2021 wasn't a big deal, uh, 2020 also, but to 2022, it became a big deal. Um, and speak, speaking specifically of crypto, what I noticed uh, is that, you know, before people was they were basically focusing in you know having a, a centralized exchange account and uh, getting exposure and you know some of them trading more frequently others you know uh less so but now what i what i have seen is is a lot of interest you know using the, the chains using the protocols i think that the airdrops that we had last this last couple of years which in some some situations were like big money, uh, $20,000, $10,000, $5,000, $1,000, which is, you know, a lot of money, uh, open their eyes, you know, to let's test, let's you let's use it. I, I also try to, uh, repeat this a lot, you know, um, another day someone asked now, ah, give us a tutorial on, on how to get airdrops. I said, dude, it's impossible because every, every, you know, project is different. Every airdrop, um, uh, criteria is different from from one another what i can say you is uh, get some if you know put in your wallet and use the protocol as much as you can uh the protocols the chains and so forth that probably you will be eligible to to an airdrop so this was an, an like an eye opening to a lot of people and you know we, we in crypto a lot of people they uh they complain a lot about about airdrops because you know it's easy money, but on the other side, you create a supply that usually uh, is hard to digest, uh, even more in a bear market. But um, and, and I myself, I always, you know, question the, the effectiveness of these airdrops. But after seeing, you know, this change in, in how people uh, were was looking, uh, uh, you know, how people became more uh, interested in doing stuff on chain, I think it it is an, an effective way of uh, of marketing, not only for the project but for the for the market as a whole. You know, even as we, we question the the effectiveness of these airdrops, because you know, one, from one side it's good and easy money, but on the other side you you create a, a huge supply that needs to be digested by the market through sometimes a long time. Um, but when I saw uh, people, our subscribers, you know talking about it, uh, being interested in, in using chains in projects, 
um, I saw that despite the the supply uh, increase the cost that that it bears, it is a very good marketing strategy, not only for the project itself but for for the mar market as a whole. You know. Yeah, absolutely. I think, and for the airdrop holder, I mean, you just got to remember you got to just dump those things quick, right? <laughs> right? So, you, like, don't, 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 okay. don't just don't sit on those things. I mean, I. I uh, I, I've, I've, I learned that lesson the hard way. I sat on way too many of these things and I should just dump them. But anyway, uh, such is life. You live, you live and you learn. Um, so you mentioned that you have a lot of like uh, quite a bit of a focus on, uh, on kind of the macro angle, just because just given your backgrounds coming, kind of coming out of traditional finance, um, maybe talk a little bit about the macro climate in Brazil right now. And, um, you know, kind of, What's the connection there with with the, the mindset of of, of uh, you know some of your investors or some of your community? So, when I go, Bogo. I, I was gonna mention that uh, in general, uh, the the Brazilian situation uh, has little weight overall on, on crypto markets, and and specifically in this last these last especially last month or, or a few weeks, uh, Brazil apparently is starting to do its homework. Uh, the politicians are realizing uh, the importance of fiscal controls. Um, they have the new uh, uh, fiscal uh, arcabouço. Uh, 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 so in, in this period, the, the real actually appreciated against the dollar. Also, we're also having a fall in the DXY globally. And so it's acting uh, against us right now. But I think that uh, in general, the Brazilian investor knows uh, of the, the government tendencies to spending. And, and this doesn't weigh in on the decision to invest or not in crypto at, at the moment. Uh, so, yeah. And, and also speaking a little bit more about the, the uh, world macro, I think we're seeing uh, uh, the Fed uh, getting close to its limit of rate hikes, and and of course the the, the banking crisis uh, that's going on in the U.S. the banking concent concentration that this will lead to, uh, the confidence crisis uh, crisis with the banking system in general, uh, and 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 if you if you can uh, some people in crypto also have a confidence issue with the fractional reserve banking in general. Uh, for trad fight players, this might sound a bit extreme, uh, but we're seeing many of the problems that arise with uh, fractional reserve banking and uh, uh, the conjunction of that and uh, government spending and, and, of course, monetary, expansionary monetary policy. Uh, we have a, a thesis uh, uh, that uh, central banks are, are in a trap where they they are unable to contract uh, uh, every every expansion they have they can never come back to the uh, level they were before ever since the great financial crisis we've seen uh, central bank assets increase greatly uh, and every time central banks try to to contract their monetary policies it was really short-lived so what ended up happening is you have to expand more and more each time and your stimulus has less and less effect over the economy until something breaks. And that's a perfect setup for, for Bitcoin and for a, a reserve uh, asset. So, George, if you want to give your view. It's basically that. And, you know, we cover a lot of uh, U.S. macro, basically, global macro, uh, less uh, Brazilian macro. But one thing that's current macro situation uh, is affecting um, not Bitcoin as a whole, but the inflow of new investors or investors that already uh, had some money in, in crypto coming back is, as you said, interest rates. You know, when you have uh, 13, 14, basically risk-free is not risk-free, but similar to risk-free uh, returns, um, it's hard to sell, you know, uh, but seems that we are reaching a, a point where this, the local central bank will start to to uh, lower the, the interest rate and we might start to see a you know more uh, appetite for risk assets 
uh, equities and so forth and obviously down in the risk curve we have we have crypto and you know probably as the as the interest rate goes down we're going to see more uh more investors interested in, in in coming back to the markets so um basically we have globally uh something similar happening and locally we also have uh something similar happening so um i think on a macro basis we are on a much better spot than we were for for example in 2022 Got it, got it. And to, and to what extent are are some of your your investors, some of your community members, you know, kind of you know focused on you know kind of with one eye on what's happening in Brazil and with one eye on what's happening in the U.S. as far as as dictating, um, you know, what type of investment you know theses or decisions they might be making. Um, obviously, crypto is you know the crypto cycles are much more tied to the Fed than they are the you know the Brazilian central bank, um, and you know given you know your point about the you know the 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 limited ability to contract uh the monetary policy i mean we just saw that recently with you know i think we you know they, they began tightening a year ago and uh just after the the silicon valley bank you know banking crisis collapse all of a sudden you know the balance sheet volume just shot up again um so really keen to you know to what extent it is are, are you are, is your community kind of really tracking you know what's happening just like in the u.s at the times I've talked to you guys, that you guys knew more about what's going on in the U.S. than I did, so I was pretty impressed. I was like, "Oh man, I got I to stay ahead of these guys. They really, they really know their stuff." Uh, basically, we we um, we spent in terms of macro, we spent a lot of time uh, understanding what's going on. For example, in um, economic data that that is announced on, on a daily basis and. Uh, we pay attention to us europe and, and japan and china basically because you know um it, crypto is a, is, is a global is a global market brazil has some influence but you know it's very small um but our uh, subscribers the vast majority of them they don't have only crypto investments they also have investments in other asset classes uh many in, in equities you know due to the, the you know the history of, of tc so we, they have pay attention in, in both sides we focus more on uh really uh foreign macro stuff as i said uh us uh europe uh china and, and japan because these guys um they do influence the the flows of uh globally and you know by now i think it's pretty pretty clear that bitcoin and and the other crypto assets they are very influenced by uh interest rates and also by liquidity that we have on a global basis so this is our you know is how we keep track really closely to these, these factors and to give us you know hints on change mo moments where the market is is, is changing the direction and one thing that yeah. uh, it was nice uh we we took a long time uh, like we're repeating this a lot was um as Bogo said, you need to buy when nobody wants. You need to buy when we have a bear market. You don't want to buy when Bitcoin is making all time highs. You won't make money, but you know you just um, left behind a lot of uh, of return by you know just getting in when things were were uh, very heated. So you know it's a, it's an educational uh, constant uh, battle that we have. Uh, but I think we we did it pretty well because our uh, our audience there they you know they kept uh, interested in crypto. Yeah, and one other question, kind of going back to what we were uh, talking about earlier with with just kind of the retail versus institutional investor breakdown, and um, we were kind of talking about how there's for the for a, a market the size of Brazil, like 200 plus million people. The amount of people who are actively kind of investing in equities or, or you know, really involved in any type of investment activity is quite low. And I'm just wondering why why is that? Is it is it is it an issue of like just financial education, or is is there more kind of like systemic um, kind of like you know barriers in place that are preventing that people from are these products just like not very available um, like. Like, what is it that's like preventing more people from getting involved in just investing like more broadly in Brazil? Yeah, I'd say financial education is one thing. Uh, capital, 
available to invest is another one. Uh, uh, structurally high interest rates is another one, uh, for sure. Um, and then overall underperformance of the Brazilian stock index versus uh, other countries. For example, if you look at the S&P uh, and you compare it to the Bovespa, it's, it's, it's insane the amount of money that the American investor made throughout a century and the Brazilian mm -hmm. investor uh, always struggling in, in with crises and, and, and whatnot and, and government change and ra uh, radical governments or uh, shifts of, of, of policies that are incompatible to, to a country, a uh, developing country and, and things like that. I think, I think it's, it's a, a overall mix of, of these things. Yeah, there, there's one thing that, you know, the psychology is very key here. Brazilian, Brazil has like 200 plus people, 200 million plus people, but uh, income and wealth is very concentrated. So I don't know, three, four, five, six, 10 million people, uh, they do, uh, you know, try to find ways to, to, you know, make the money work for them through investments, but the vast majority, you know, as, as Bogo said, they don't have available capital. So they basically, you know, at the end of the month, or you are in, in red, or, you know, what, what's left was like 100, 200, 500 bucks. And what you do, you see the savings account to just, you know, throw there and say, okay, it's, it's growing, you know, it's okay. And then you have this uh, combination with poor um, financial education, and if you if you have an inflation of seven percent, but you are getting five, uh, is is bad, you know, in your investments. But yeah. what they see is my money is growing, but they don't see that they are losing uh, purchasing power. So you know, it's basically a mix. And right, it's also right. it's also the reason why people get into so many scams uh, uh, here in, here in Brazil. Um, I was looking to, there, there's a guy that's called Michael Gaed in crypto. He writes the lead lag report and he said a very intelligent uh, phrase, right? He said that um, the, the COVID policies, the, the lockdowns, they didn't save lives. They widened the wealth gap. And essentially this uh, widening of wealth gap incentivates uh, people, uh, poorer people to take uh, more risks uh, or even uh, desperate risks uh, in need to, to, to get rich quick or to make money quick. And I think it's a phenomenon that, that is happening all throughout the world. So a part of like the retail trader uh, behavior at this casino is labeled as a casino uh, kind of investment. It's partly due to that. And here in Brazil, we have a lot of that, a lot of wealth inequality and a lot of lack of opportunities to, uh, you know, um, be become uh, uh, rich or be successful and, and, and things like that. So a part of this uh, behavior uh, of retail traders, I think it's due to this phenomenon. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, right? I think I think anybody who's being objective would, would fully agree with that assessment of uh, how the COVID has really just sort of widened the wealth gap. Uh, it's really just sort of, you know, you know, the haves and the have-nots are, are much brought farther apart than they were previously. And to a certain extent, or to a probably pretty large extent, a lot of the people that are, you know, making serious money in crypto are, you know, people who were already, like, had a lot of money to begin with, right? Uh, so I think, you know, as much as we talk about sort of, like, financial inclusion and democratization and all this kind of stuff, it's like, well, well these, are, these are sort of features and... and, and and, and you know use cases i guess of the technology but we just haven't really seen it as of yet um really impacting i mean i mean i, I just don't think we've we've we're at the point where we can say like we've actually democratized investment opportunities for anybody unfortunately um and, it's, and it probably feels like more you know even, perhaps even more stark in brazil than you know than in um you know than in the u.s right and just think just just anecdotally i mean it's at a, at a couple of crypto conferences in Brazil recently here and you know, pretty much everybody that I've met was, you know, like they, you know, they speak English, they seem pretty well educated. 
Um, you know, there's not like, you know, even just to get into the conferences, you had to pay like a pretty decent amount of money. Um, it's, so it's not like, you know, the guy selling coconut on the side of the road that's uh, showing up learning about how to invest in crypto necessarily. Um, but that's probably, you know, that's, that's probably just the natural course of things, right? Where these, these folks are going to be the, the first ones to really adopt it. And then, um, you know, hopefully there'll be some sort of, uh, you know, trickle down effect <laughs> if we want to borrow, uh, you know, like a Reaganomics type of terminology here to some extent. But um, yeah, the, the, the Bitcoiners, they have this uh, theory that they like to talk about a lot, which is called the Cantillon effect. And uh, we're seeing live uh, the Cantillon effect happening in, in modern society. So Cantillon, Richard Cantillon was a philosopher in the economist and philosopher in the 1800s. And he developed a, a, a thesis that um, those people that were closer to the gold mines at the time were those that got rich in society. And, and that's exactly what happens right now in a universe of, of, in a society of a lot of money printing and expansionary monetary policy. So those that are closer to the money printing in the economy, the banks, the financial institutions, uh, they get the benefits of this uh, expansion uh, much more than the base of the society. Right. When people yeah. when when this money arrives at the regular uh, worker, uh, all the prices have, and assets have already inflated in price. And so they don't get benefited as much as the, the bank. Yeah, it's, it's really a sinister trap, right, where the you know, the, the people who already have the people who already own the assets like the, you know, the property or the equities or whatever. I mean, they're enjoying these massive gains. And then, you know, the average person. Uh, who's just earning a paycheck? All, they just get stuck with the inflation, basically. Right? <laughs> right? It's it's sinister. It's a sinister thing. Um, so, would love to just talk quickly here about um, you know just generally in the Brazil crypto ecosystem. What do you view, see currently, kind of from your 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 respective vantage points here? As like, what's the big missing piece in the Brazil kind of crypto world right now? Could, whether it's something sort of uh, systemic or or maybe more like systematic or more specific to uh, crypto specifically, but what would you say is kind of the, the missing piece at the moment? Um, I think that you know, despite having a very large market in terms of number of people, we still uh, don't have as many projects as uh, we should have. You know, um, I don't know why. Maybe it's, it's because, you know, if you're a really good dev, you, you probably can get a lot of money by, you know, working for a project abroad and you don't need to, you know, go through all the pain of, uh, you know, structuring a, pro a project and taking the risk and so forth. But, you know, recently um, I start to see a shift on, on, on this because after what's going on in, in US, you know, all, all the, the regulatory crackdown, seems that you know there's an interest for uh, for brazil due to the new law and and you know more openness openness to to crypto so we might might be seeing a change here in on, on that regard would be very very good if we had you know more uh brazilian made stuff uh projects because then you know it's a showcase for other uh jurisdictions to bring uh people come here or you know become a, a model for for you know other other countries to adopt so like Pix, Pix is a huge success, huge success, uh, and the central banks basically you know uh, educating other central banks on how to do it. Uh, imagine if we had like successful products uh, built in Brazil, you know teams in Brazil, and we don't have the regulatory issues, um, and then you know uh, we can just. Uh, sort of exports this this know-how yeah i i'd say that all in all brazil is in a good path in crypto uh we have a, a, a decent regulatory uh, policies putting in place uh, much more uh, crypto friendly than in the u.s for example um we have a central bank that is uh really interested in crypto you see campus neto uh, our, our central bank president talking about uh, 
uh, DeFi and and uh, uh, tokenization and even metaverse in some of his uh, talks. He's very interested in, in the crypto theme. I saw last week a, a, a guy that's a uh, really respected economist that already was the director of the central bank and uh, he's possibly uh, one of the next uh, uh, to, to, to be in the, the central bank in this new government, which is called Tony Volpon. He posted a, a Ethereum uh, 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 chart and he said, uh, be in the right side of history. So uh, that's really fantastic. Um, so I, I think that uh, policymakers and regulators are doing a good job uh, in, in Brazil in general. And I think that uh, institutions, even though many of them are not investing themselves, um, we see a lot of the big institutions uh, uh, creating infrastructure and developing uh, products and, and uh, offering crypto for their basis. You see, it, for example, uh, you have... Uh, obviously, Mercado Bitcoin, which is the, the greatest exchange in, in Brazil. Uh, but we, we also see like trad five players like XP and, and BTG offering uh, crypto products, which is fantastic. You see Itaú, the biggest, uh, most traditional bank in Brazil, uh, investing in, in tokenization uh, companies, uh, Kinea, uh, through Kinea, uh, they, they invest in a, a tokenization a company, uh, which is really interesting. Um, so you're seeing uh, uh, steps uh, in the right direction in general in the market. And I have to agree with George that uh, maybe there's a lack of uh, native uh, crypto uh, projects. You know, uh, uh, I think that uh, we, we've seen uh, just a small number of, of blockchains that are rise here in Brazil. Hatter is, uh, I think, most of a dramatic case. Uh, but we've seen, uh, and, and there are some uh, really interesting um, lending uh, products in DeFi, like Amphi and Credix. Um, but in general, there's a small amount of, of, of ventures into uh, native crypto uh, projects, I think. That. Yeah, I think that, that's a really good point on the, the kind of the lack of, of kind of organic crypto projects coming out of the country. I, mean, I think if you look at, you know, some of the, the big names that you would consider to be kind of, you know, internationally recognized uh, within within the crypto industry, uh, you're looking at like Hashdex, which is obviously, you know, doing asset management, they're not really developing like a new, I mean, it's, it's they're not really developing like a new project or technology, they're just, it's, it's an asset management play. And then you even have, you know, like like your new banks and some of these uh, kind of fintech players that are integrating crypto, but they're not really crypto native in any way. Um, so I think that's that's a really, you know, and even just looking at the, you know, some of the kind of the, the conference circuit and just kind of the, the you know, the maybe was that Ethereum Rio the other, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And, um, you know, I mean, it, it's any other country like in the us i mean there's there's like an eth eth a dedicated eth event for pretty much like every city now like there's like eth denver and eth new york and eth austin and eth whatever and um and in brazil it's like you have like one like one or two of these a year pretty much for the whole country right so there's still a bit of a um uh you know kind of a lack of you know community i mean there's there's people who are doing some really great things to try to build that community but it's just not quite um uh, it's still pretty nascent, I guess, is, is the takeaway. Um, so anyway, we're almost out of time here, but we'd love to just kick it back to both of you for some kind of some predictions uh, or things that you're looking out for for the rest of the year, uh, whether it be Brazil specific or just uh, you know more market specific generally. Paulo, you want or George, you want to take that? Um, uh, I'll go first. Basically, you know, uh, our thesis for the rest of the of the year is um, we don't do we don't have another uh, uh, lower uh, we already are saw the bottom, so no new lows, um, and we are constructive. You know, to for you know speaking specifically of Bitcoin, we can reach you know forty five thousand uh, dollars. I think is a, is a fairly uh, reachable target. Um, and speaking specifically in Brazil, I think this year um, we'll see more uh, projects uh, coming from here. You know, um, 
that's my feeling. I don't know if I'm right, but as I, I told you, uh, I started to see some interest in Brazil that um, like one year ago didn't exist, despite uh, we have more people uh, trading and in, in having crypto in the portfolio. So I think those two uh, things to consider. Yeah, I'd like to, to make two general predictions about markets in general. Um, I think that um, not speaking uh, so much about like price, but uh, I think flows into crypto will continue uh, a lot uh, uh, to Bitcoin because of uh, banking and other possible uh, systemic crises in the world. And I think that uh, also to Ethereum, because after the Shanghai update, uh, the ability to withdraw coins from staking is going to attract a lot of uh, big uh, institutional money. So I think that you have two really uh, good thriving ec ecosystems here, uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, uh, which are going to uh, uh, receive a lot of flows. And I think that uh, the, the most obvious uh, thesis uh, in, in the longer term is the tokenization of uh, real world assets. I think that it's, it's a clear killer use case for crypto. And we're going to start seeing more and more adoption and uh, good products with good user experiences and uh, removing a lot of the pain points in, in, in this market. So I think, yeah, yeah, these are the three main main points. Great. Well, thank you so much, Georgi Paolo, for your time here. It's really great having you on. Uh, always great chatting. Uh, where can folks go if they're interested in either getting in touch with either of you or just learning more about uh, Traders Club or TC Crypto? Um. My my uh, Twitter handle and also Instagram handle is George Soto. My name TC. Um, we have the TC is tc.com.br. You can find everything about uh, our our not only our product but TC as a whole uh, there and uh, through the app on uh, on iPhone and, and Android TC Investimentos. Uh, you can invest in our funds it's called TC Digital Assets. Uh, so these are the, the the main ways, you know, to get in contact with us. Yeah, download the TC app. It's free and you can get a lot of functionalities for free downloading the TC uh, app. Uh, and you can find us as well on social media. My social media handles are all uh, at uh, Bogosian, which is my last name, uh, just like it's written over there on the screen. So thank you so much for, for this space, Aaron. It's been a... a real good chat and uh, really interesting and, and thank you so much for having us thank you very much Aaron, and, and nice work on on the newsletter and the podcast thank you very much amazing thanks so much for joining you guys and uh, thanks everyone for listening